Okay, so this is the travel backpack that I use. Fits the measurements to be able to fit in as a carry-on luggage on all airlines. Also, if you pack it like me, it'll be about eight kilos, which is this many pounds. And yeah, it's just a really good backpack. On the back, we have room for electronics, camera gear, stuff like that. Inside is a laptop sleeve and it's protected by your clothes and all that stuff. So it has compartments for everything. It has built-in rain covers down here. And what more could you ask for? So let's get into what I pack for a week of travel or a year of travel. Maybe we shouldn't travel right now because these are strange times. But what we can do is we can think about what we put in our pack for the next trip when we can travel again. And I hope you can gain some information of how to pack my carry-on bag for a long trip. Let's get into it. Okay, so first up is a water bottle. This is a thermos, so you can use hot fluid or cold fluid. It'll maintain the temperature for pretty much the whole day. It's really good. And it's sealed off, easy to open, easy to lock. It's just go and get one of these, very sustainable. You can refill it everywhere and we get less plastic around the world. So really good choice. Next item. So next up is my laptop. It's, well, it looks exactly like a Mac, but I'm a PC guy. So, well, apparently it's called a Matebook, which sounds a little bit like Facebook, but for finding a mate, on social media, I don't know, I digress. Anyway, it's a really good laptop. It's an ultrabook, but it has a graphics card so you can vid it, video edit on it as well. Fits snugly into the backpack. Really light, really good. So as a disclaimer, I am not sponsored by any of the companies behind any of these items that I'm about to show you today. So that's out of the way. But this one, a travel adapter, really important if you're traveling internationally. Now I'm Swedish, so that's a type C, I believe, but it can turn into any plug you want. If it's everywhere, all over the world. This one also has some USB connections and it meets my needs. Never failed me, really good. Next item, obviously, don't forget to bring your charger for your phone, your laptop, everything. Now, on the topic of charging, I always bring a power bank. This one is 18,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's right up there on the max you can bring on an airplane. And it charges a phone about four times, has several USB connections, even a flashlight into this one. But who knows when you're gonna need that. So I like to record my trips and keep memories and it would be really really bad if I lost all my footage so I'm bringing an actual physical hard drive with protective covers so this one is really good a couple of terabytes fits a lot of files can't go wrong with that one obviously I also bring my camera gear which I'm filming on right now so I'll show you with my smartphone how it looks like in the backpack so it's very handy that it opens from the back like this. Now this is what it looks like inside. Plenty of space for all the camera gear and electronics, cables, everything. Bring items that pack down really small and they're light and they can still be used for all the purposes you can imagine. So this one is a day pack, basically just a backpack packed into a very small, very small container sufficient for your day trips packs down really small now this is just a rain jacket I bring it everywhere it's always in my backpack even at home really also proper rain jacket really nice can take any amount of rain that I've seen so far and I've been in monsoons. On the topic of things that pack down really small and are really handy, here is a 
microfiber towel that you should always bring if you go traveling. So, really small, dries quickly. Just big enough for a human body, gets you dry, what's not to love? So no matter if you're going to a cold climate or a warm climate, even in Southeast Asia, if it's 35 degrees, which is this many Fahrenheit, it's going to be really, really cold if you're in an air-conditioned bus or sometimes a mall or anywhere. So bring a thick sweater anywhere you go. Now, on the topic of clothes, I like to bring packing cubes so I can have things organized and I find them easily in the pack. Remember, there's still quite a few items in there, so... Small ones have underwear and socks. And also, I like to keep another packing cube inside it for dirty laundry, so you keep them separated from the other ones. And in the big one, I like to keep all the pants, or the shorts, and the tops. So, and I pack for about one week to ten days, maybe, and then I do laundry along the way. And I like to pack things that are made of wool because sheep have evolved so nicely over the years. So they have this wool, right, that they dress in. And it's really smart because even if it rains and they're soaking wet, the wool will still keep them warm. And if it's cold, well, the wool traps a lot of air, which will keep them warm as well. And any climate, wool will be a really smart fabric to be wearing and I suggest that humans wear it too. If you need to wash it, it's really easy. You just wash it in a sink or in a washer, it's fine and then it dries quickly overnight if you want that. So pack wool, pack smart, use packing cubes, separate the dirty laundry. On to the next. Now as for hygiene, I like to bring something that you can hang on a hook, in a bathroom, on a hostel, any accommodation where you find yourself at. And one that is spacious enough for your stuff, but not too big because you always want to save weight. Anyway, I bring these go tubes, I think they're called, and I fill them with soap. And when I go on the trip for the first time, and then as I move along, I just refill them. And these are good for airplanes as well. You just need a transparent bag to put them in. I bring one of these razors because men need to shave sometimes. I bring a nail clipper. They have once taken a nail clipper from me at the airport. I believe it was in Fiji and they thought this was something dangerous to bring on an airplane so I couldn't take it and they stole it from me but I got a new one. It's okay. No one else has complained. I like to bring deodorant. Some backpackers don't, but I don't know. I want to keep civilized, at least a little bit. Bring a toothbrush. Some people are so minimalistic that they will actually break a toothbrush in two and only bring half of it. But I will bring a full one that packs in avoid the germs, scrape the tongue, all good, really small, fits nicely. Bring some toothbrush, but not too big, remember under 100 milliliters per fluid container. I like to bring a first aid kit. I think I need to refill this one, but it has razors, it has alcohol to clean wounds, and it has bandages and band-aids so if you get injured you're prepared sometimes I like to keep some stomach pills in this one as well because when you're a tourist and you're arriving in a new culture and you're eating the food and your stomach can't handle it well then there are pills to help you with that and of course always bring condoms I'm not kidding very important now, onto some more quality of life things. As the sun 
is hitting my face really harshly, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I like to bring noise cancelling headphones, and these fit really well. Shaped like a human ear. Turn on by doing that. Really comfy. And then I use them on planes for traveling, and they are noise cancelling, so they remove any crying babies or loud talkers or snoring people or just noise from the mode of transportation. It's a really good thing to have and they're not that big so they fit in the bag. Now on the topic of keeping the peace I also like to bring earplugs and yeah if it's noisy you want to sleep, you're staying in a hostel or just near a construction site, a party, anything. Earbuds really really good to have don't take up a lot of space either no weight no space also a sleeping mask that is just good for when you want to sleep when you travel you get jet lagged it's bright outside you're still tired as hell you want to sleep put these on or on the plane you're high up in the air still getting light through the window they're just a godsend sometimes now that the sun is shining, I feel like I need sunglasses. Always bring them, even if they are cheap and they're from Vietnam. They claim to be real Ray-Bans, but I have my doubts. Anyway, I bring them in a hard case because they won't get damaged, even if they're cheap. But also, if you are going to transport something that has value and it's a bit fragile, maybe you want to keep them in a hard case because Soft inside, hard outside, protects from anything in the bag. Other quality of life things is a spork. Do you like hiking? Or do you just want to have food from the supermarket on the road? Well then, a spork is for you. Knife, fork, spoon, perfect. Weighs nothing, easy to just clean up as you go. Also, a flashlight. Some people will probably argue that you don't really need a separate torch or a flashlight because, well, you have your phone and you saw even my power bank had a little flashlight on it but have you considered, if you like sunsets or something and you've been hiking up a mountain and you're going down again, it's completely dark remember you're on top of a mountain, this will not be quick and you have to use your phone as a flashlight and it's running low on battery I am speaking from experience. Don't do that. Bring a flashlight down the mountain. I almost forgot this one. It's called a buff. Well, it can turn into anything. Well, do you want a beanie? Twist it, make a beanie. There you go. Do you want something for your neck? Well, just use it like that. For your ears, for your hair like a bandana, a scarf, protect against the sun, keep warm. It's just everything. It's really good. It weighs nothing. It's wool, easy to clean, perfect thing to bring on your trip. And the last bit of quality of life items that I like to bring is a padlock with a code for accommodations. You will not always be with your bag, so when you're with your day pack and you leave your bag, you can lock it with this one. I like to bring a climbing carabiner. It's actually very durable and weighs very little. It's aluminum and you can hook it onto your bag. So let's say you rent a tent or something and you go hiking. You can put the tent in this one, hang it onto the bag or a sleeping bag, anything, a water bottle. So things you want to hang on top of your bag, you just put there with a carabiner. Or if you're in an airplane and your water bottle doesn't fit in the little compartment in front of you, you know, mine usually does not. So I put my water bottle on a carabiner and I put it on the seat in front of me. So it's always accessible. Now, when you travel internationally, in most countries, especially when you're flying, they're going to hand out forms and you're going to need to fill them out for immigration always bring a pen. I see a lot of people not bringing the pen 
It's obviously good if you want to just take notes or something, but you need it to fill out forms as well, so bring a pen. And lastly, bring your documents. This is a passport holder that I got from a friend of mine. So bring your passport, and don't forget some countries you need... Wow, that's a wad of cash. That's not bad. I didn't know I had that. <laughs> but anyway, bring your uh, certificate of vaccination. Well, you could bring a wad of cash if you want, especially US dollars or euros, like a strong currency that you can use anywhere. Always good to have. And then bring your passport. Absolutely essential. Do you have an international driver's license? Bring that as well. All right. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I hope you found that interesting and useful. Again, I'm not sponsored by anyone, this is just inspiration for you, and I hope we get to travel soon again. Until then, let's prepare our bags. Okay, see you in the next one.